The Littles Go Exploring, Chapter 3 Late that afternoon, Cousin Dinky and his wife, Della, landed their glider on the Biggs' roof. They had finished delivering the mail. Cousin Dinky liked to visit the Littles at dinner time. The food was always delicious. Meals at the Littles came from Mrs. Biggs' kitchen. She made such good meals that Mrs. Little never bothered learning to cook. The Littles simply took what they wanted from the Biggs. The Biggs didn't know that an electric socket at their kitchen counter was a secret door. The Littles just slipped through the door and grabbed whatever leftovers they wanted. It didn't take much food to feed the Littles and their guests. The Biggs never missed it. After supper, Granny Little went off to bed. Mrs. Little fed and burped baby Betsy. She put her to bed in the matchbox cradle. Once again, the talk turned to Grandpa Little. What could have happened to him when he went out into the dark woods alone? Dinky and I could fly over by the dark woods, said Della, to see what we could see. It's been two years since Grandpa went away, said Mr. Little. You may not find any clues. That submarine raft may be at the bottom of the brook, Uncle Pete said. You'd never see that from up in the glider. Uncle Nick stood up. There's only one way to find out what really happened to Grandpa. I will explore the brook, he said. I'll need two volunteers to go along. I'll go, said Tom. Tom, said Mrs. Little, you'll do no such thing. What's the use, asked Uncle Pete. He's dead, that's for sure. He might be alive, Uncle Pete, said Lucy. She took her uncle's hand. We should look anyway, said Tom. I think Granny Little needs to know what happened to her husband, said Della. If there's the smallest chance we can find out, we should try. Mrs. Little nodded. Granny doesn't say anything about it, Della went on, but you can tell it upsets her not to know. Suddenly, Mrs. Little stood up. That settles it, she said. Della is right. Everyone looked surprised. They had never heard Mrs. Little talk this way. I have to speak for Granny, she went on. She's not here to speak for herself. Now this is what we should do. Mrs. Little took a deep breath. Somehow, somehow we're all going to go and look for whatever it is we're looking for. Every one of us. Until we find out what happened to that dear old man. We're going to do it for Granny. Because she works so hard for every one of us. Especially me. Mrs. Little sat down. There, she said. Mr. Little smiled. Mrs. Little has spoken, he said. Lucy kissed her mother. You were great, mother, she said. Then it's decided, Uncle Nick said. Instead of a small three-man expedition, as I suggested, we'll put together the biggest and best tiny people's expedition ever. Uncle Pete sat up. Well. If you're all set on going, I'll go too, he said. Someone will have to look after the weapons. There will be danger. We'll need to be strongly armed. Uncle Nick held up some maps. I'll map the way, he said. We'll search every nook and cranny of the brook. Hooray, shouted Lucy. Let's go and wake up Granny and tell her the news. The Littles are going exploring. <laughs> and we'll read Chapter 4 in the next video. Please come back and join us. I hope you're enjoying the story, and I hope you reach down, click like, subscribe to our channel. I love you guys, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now.